Hello, my name is Quasplum and welcome to my tutorial on the Equip Anything glitch. For those of you who are out of the loop, the Equip Anything glitch is a glitch that lets you equip essentially any item in the game that you want onto Max and Monica's item and weapon slots. So equip anything on these. Like if you see here, I can't equip the Sea Dragon Crystal on the item slots or on Max's weapon slots. Uh, the Equip Anything glitch will let me do equip any of these items, anything here that I want. It doesn't even matter what, uh, except for maybe the clothing because these might crash the game, but essentially anything else I can go equip on here and then it'll leave you some really interesting effects that will completely break down the game. So first off, uh, if you're following along, uh, if you're trying to alert the any percent and any percent no debug categories for a Dark Cloud 2, uh, you absolutely should be following along and try to learn how these glitches work. Do not try to learn the big menus for either the categories without trying to understand how all these work. Especially right now, since I'm still in the middle of like rerouting stuff, like you never know when the menu might change again. <laughs> so just make sure you try and learn how this works. It'll help out. It will definitely be way more helpful than trying to just memorize all the inputs. That's not going to be an efficient way to learn the menu, and it's not going to teach you how to recover from any like small mistakes that you might make. The menu is a lot looser than you would expect. All right then. So uh, first things first, you want to have. Uh, a couple of items. You need enough money, first off. It's essentially enough to buy 21 bread total, so however much bread you have, figure out how much you need. 60, uh, 30 gold each bread, so it's not a whole lot of money. 630 at the most, assuming you make no mistakes. Uh, next you will want the fishing rod and some bait. Uh, at least one holy crystal, at least one hunter crystal. Uh, a couple of rolling logs, preferably like around 20 plus, but uh, like I think the bare minimum you need is around 16. With any other spare crystals, it doesn't matter what, just some spare crystals as you get along the way. Uh, an energy pack for the right pods, um, so weapons for Max and Monica, essentially like at least one of every type of weapon, just in case you would uh, need to for some other slots. Clothing for Max and Monica, it needs to be like the actual thing they wear on, on their body, not their feet or their hat, so no shoes, uh, not the shoes or the hats. Specifically, like the, something like denim overalls or the pumpkin shorts. And some repair powders, um, at least two different types of repair powders. Just one or two will be enough for each of them. Just you need at least two different types. The aquarium, some fish, probably one fish is enough. You'll be duping these anyways. Uh, a weapon for the right pod, doesn't matter what it is. And that's basically it. You don't need a whole lot of stuff, really. These you can get very easily. If you have like, a save file that's already in chapter 8, you'll just get these in like a few seconds. But yeah, that's essentially all you'll need for the menu. Uh, so, first things first, we're going to... Uh, I'll, let me first show you how to do some of the uh, glitches that I'll need in preparation. So, this one is duping fish. The way it works, you want to... Uh, first off, press select. And then they'll organize your inventory. Once you've done that, go to where the uh, aquarium and your fish are. Swap your aquarium. Pick up your aquarium to swap with the fish. Don't do the other way around or else you do this, which you don't want. And pick up the fish that's over here to the left of the aquarium. Select again to organize and then circle X, circle X, circle X, circle X. Now you've duped the fish and I'll put this in. You see, I only put in one fish earlier. I put two fish actually and now I have Three, four, five, six fish now. Yeah, definitely not supposed to happen. So I have more fish than I had before. This is useful for this, the menu because uh, we'll be using. There are a few things you, where you can use named fish to do some weird glitches. So being able to like name a fish, dupe it, and then just uh, use that. Or if you want to be safe, dupe like an unnamed fish and then name them as you go along. That will probably be better while you're learning the menu. Alright. Uh, next up. Uh, this is the glitch for equipping anything you want as bait. So equip the fishing rod and then put any bait on the fishing rod, doesn't matter what it is. Now grab the bait and swap it with any item in the, in the inventory. So say you want to equip the denim overalls as bait, swap these and then press O. And now I have the denim overalls on my fishing rod. If I then proceed to re-equip my weapon, any weapon, and then use remove bait, on the vision rod, this actually resets the item to factory settings. It, in this case right now, this is a normal denim overall. Later on, we'll be making glitched items, which in that case, just some that I will be 
uh, that will have unintended effects. If we want you to return it back to normal, to like a uh, kind of a normal version of the item, then just do this, and you can actually get the original item back, essentially. Now then, let's get to some heavy glitching stuff now. First off, you want to spectrumize some rolling logs. Spectrumize. I like to do 12, but you want to do at least 11. It'll be faster to menu in 11, but uh, I don't like the item that gets made. We'll be creating items now, so do this. Now you want to put this on the second slot of the 10th row if you got all the way here legitimately. I actually have debug mode uh, activated just so uh, I can show this off a little easily in case I forget an item or something, but uh, if you got here legitimately, you should have Conda's expanded. Uh, you should have the expanded inventory from Conda, which means that you uh, you need to put this sense sphere onto the second slot of the 10th row. You can figure out easily by just doing a full page here, full page here, and then is right here on the last row. If you did not get here legitimately, like I just used debug mode and my game is kind of wonky, uh, you will have to put this right here in the second slot in ninth row. It's 100% the same thing, just in a different slot. I've tried it out and the glitch is exactly the same regardless of which slot you have to use. It's just one row off. Now then, this is going. Uh, this is the poly version of the equip anything glitch. This is how we'll be getting a type 0 gun, which is needed to do the faster version of the equip anything glitch. So you want to first take your pred all but one. Now scroll all the way to the left here. You can see that I'm clicking left and I can't go into the menu. If I swap with this item here, hold left and press O. In that one small frame while the two items are swapping, I can actually manage to glitch all the way here. Like it's a very easy setup. I just need to hold down left. You don't need to like frame perfectly press anything. You just hold down left and then press a the button. And now, because I have one bread on me in this menu, I can actually buy 13 bread for a total of 21 bread. So you can see 20 there, one in my hand. Next up, now I'm going to make a save state here real quick, just so I can show this off, because this is what you don't want to do. Right, so... If you come into the item menu right now, you won't be able to leave because you're, uh, you have more than 20 bread, you're over capacity. You cannot have more than 20 bread normally. So you gotta get rid of this and redo the entire setup with Polly. Yeah, that is not what we want to happen, so... i come back to my other save states. Now, what I want to do is come into the Make menu instead, grab any stack of items, doesn't matter what item, as long as it has at least two in the stack. Triangle down to get all but one, Grab the stack of 20 bread, press circle to flip it with the item here. Grab the single bread out again to now glitch these together. So this actually glitches the return position of this stack of bread into the make menu. Now what I want to do is come in here, grab this bread. Remember I said this glitched up the return position to the make menu. So if I sw uh, switch it with this here, I press O. It did nothing, but the game internally tried to Swap the positions, and now if I come here, press X over the right pot, come bring a use, take out any uh, any useless item, swap it, and then press O. Oh wait, shoot! Uh, I put a yeah. Uh, I moved it back under the tenth row. I was supposed to do this on the other one. Whoops. Yep. See, I have a glitch trumpet gun. If I press X, I cannot equip this in any way. It's just a glitched gun. But there are a lot of really broken effects that come from it. Well, main effect is that uh, this lets me do the same thing with Polly's menu just now, except faster. So if I take this stack of bread, take all but one, pick up this gun, press OO to swap these two, press X over max to put the gun on, and I'll come uh, grab this bread, for example, and then press O. I've now equipped bread onto Max's uh, gun slot, which I'm sure you can tell that's not supposed to happen. Uh, you can basically do this with any item you want, uh, barring a few small exceptions that would crash the game. Oh, but uh, on top of that, one other thing I want to mention, do not ever grab the gun and put it in the stack that is going to delete your gun. Let me just show you real quick so you know that uh, I'm not just bullshitting you, but yeah, if I put this, see the gun is now gone, and you'll have to redo the entire setup with spectrumizing the 12 or so 
rolling logs, and then also a poly menu. Alright, so I could do this to equip any item I want in the game here, but some might crash a game like this. No, it's fine. Hmm. Wait, I remember there was an item that can crash the game, which you want to be careful of. Hmm. Alright, well, at least it didn't crash, so that's good. Anyways. Next up, this is Max's... Uh, right, this is equipping some of Max's gun slots, and... Uh, something about the items on here, if you see the bread here, there's three options. Like, the equip option is here, which, I mean, it's already equipped, so... If you click on this, you can now equip items from the inventory onto your item slots. It's a very specific slot here. Because this is Max's gun slot, it corresponds to slot number 2, so inventory slot number 2. So whatever item is here, it's going to equip onto Max's item slots. If I did this glitch with the wrench instead, it will be taking this item. But a problem with using a glitched uh, Type 0 wrench is that the setup is more finicky, you need to equip this, uh, you need to use the same exact wrench for so since I have a drill wrench, I need to have a type 0 drill wrench that I'm swapping with. Second off, after every time I've done this glitch, like I just did this glitch just now, I'll have to close it, come back in. With the gun, you don't need to do all that, it just, so it's just significantly better to have the gun than the wrench. Anyways, now with this on, yeah, you can see I can do some really crazy stuff with this. I can, Equip this correspond. These also correspond to uh, the slots one, two, and three. So with Max's item slots here, I can equip anything I want as a weapon now, because this is a fishing rod equip that equips it onto Max's right hand slot. Now I have his denim overalls here. I can equip other weapons like Monica's brassard on his right hand. This does not. W this does not mean I can use magic as uh, Monica or as Max's left hand, right hand weapon. It, it is just is for show, and I think in some cases like weapons don't even work properly. But yeah, that is uh, the glitch for equipping anything on Max's item and weapon slots. Now this here is the Monica version of the glitch. So if you want to equip any on Monica slots, you do the same thing here. Grab all but one bread, swap, swap, X on max, pick up um, the bread. The reason you want to pick up the bread is because, look, if I have the gun equipped, I, I'm pressing L1, R1, they don't switch over to the different menus. If I have the bread instead, I can just go over to Monica's side, or even the right pot side. Okay, so you switch any character I want. Now, this here is where I can actually choose what I want to do. Before, like whatever, uh, if I was on Max's screen, I could only equip stuff onto his gun slot. But on Monica's side here, if I want to equip something on Monica's sword slot, I pick up a Monica sword like this, press O, hover over her, press X, and then just come here to the bread and swap. And now I have bread on her uh, weapon slot. If I wanted to do on her Bressart, it's exactly the same. Down, she has bread on her Bristard slot. And again, this works exactly the same as Max's menu. If I use equip, the, the her right hand it corresponds to slot 1, so this item slot here, the very first one, will get equipped. If I do equip on this one, second slot, course, uh, corresponds to second slot, but uh, here, again, the same thing. If, you, if I had a sword here, like this, I can equip, and then because uh, it corresponds to the third slot, the third slot here will get equipped onto Monica's sword slots, and in this case after fishing rod, though, uh, Monica can't fish with it, unfortunately. Here, I have nothing, and then if I use the gun slot, unfortunately with guns, it's, like, because Monica doesn't use a gun, it checks for Max's weapons instead, so now I've swapped his Type 0 gun with this regular gun here. Same thing with this, I believe, just switches his denim, uh, the denim overalls for whatever he's wearing, which is another pair of denim overalls. Alright, uh, next. So that's how to equip stuff onto maximum Monica's glitch slot. So what you want to do here for continue, before continue on is you want to make sure you equip a, a Monica outfit, the pumpkin shorts, or some other outfit. Like you can use the striped dress. Uh, you can use oh, and these are really far down for some reason. Oh, here they are. 
So yeah, just any of Monica's outfits. So pumpkin shorts, striped dress, starly guitar, panther ensemble, pa princess dress, anything there. Uh, so that, that. So to do that, you want to equip something on her weapon or item slots. So you could just do like the bread or the repair powder or something like that. This here. And now equip it. So now you can glitch on the pumpkin shorts on her outfit slot and then you equip. I've gotten rid of her outfit, which thankfully does not get rid of it on her actual model. It just glitches her up into a bunch of triangles later on, like this. So yeah, Monica is just a bunch of triangles underneath all, uh, all of that skin. Right, so Monica currently has nothing equipped on her outfit slot, but uh, we want to actually have stuff on her. We'll be glitching at a bunch of stuff. So let's go ahead and put this longsword over here and equip that onto her. So she is wearing a longsword on her outfit slot. Again, glitches her up. Alright, so what does this do? Um, first off, let me show you how ridiculous it's gonna get. Well, this isn't like the crazy stuff quite yet, but first off, grab all but one bread, so swap, equip. Now pick up the energy pack and come over to the right pots uh, page, circle, X. Now you've basically glitched on the glitched the right pods energy pack slot, and now we're going to pick up the single bread here and press circle, and now I've got a turkey! A broken turkey though, but it's still a turkey. So you might be wondering what happened here. Well, uh, first off, if you go ahead and unequip that sword that was on Monica, you can see that the name is kind of gone. And also the stats here are um, not correct. This is a normal long sword. It has exorcism. These three are the most important numbers. Exorcism 0, Beast 10, Scale 0. This is the one that I glitched up. 1, Exorcism. 268 beast and 22 scale. These numbers are very specific. There's a reason why they're here. Now, this this turkey. I have to pull this out of Monica's uh, outfit slot, which um, the, and because Monica's longsword was on her outfit slot. Uh, yeah, I used I essentially used Monica's um, Monica's outfit slot stats. So the stats on this longsword, and I pulled out a weapon. Or a, an item, I guess, because it could be anything in here. In this case, it was a turkey, because the beast value here, you can see right now it's 268, and originally it was 10. If you look at the debug menu here on the top left, the number next to the name of the item, uh, that is the item ID. If you check here with a turkey, hey, coincidentally, it's a 10. Hmm, yes. Coincidentally, the beast value here is a 10, and now it's been changed to 268. If we come down all the way here... Hey look, the bread is, has an ID number of 268. What a coincidence, right? So yeah, the... When, the stuff with the right pod, this, like where I glitched on an item onto... Like, like with Max's slots here, I don't know, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure how to explain this, but yeah, like just... This glitchy stuff here, where I came here and did the stuff with the right pod energy pack. Uh, I went ahead and just glitched an item onto Monica's longsword, uh, which is on Monica's alpha slot, and now it's like, well, right now she doesn't have anything on, so... If I did this again... With this magic bastard, I see I get a bread back. And if I were to come back here and equip this... Status is now Exorcism 3, 91 Beast, and 4 Scale. So 91 beast, if we come back here, I put on a regular armband, just a default armband, Magic Brassard. And look, this is a 91, so these numbers are absolutely not random. These three are very important values, actually. Um, especially the exorc especially exorcism and beast. Scale is alright, there's like one situation where we really need to deal with that. But yeah, though, every single item in the game starts off with three uh, numbers. First one is the type number, so... Uh, items, common items, well, quote unquote common items, basically any items that can stack together but aren't used for spectrumizing specifically. So things like bread, just like the food items, bread, chestnuts, bananas, uh, bait. Then there's also um, 
what else is there? I think maybe gate keys, I'm not really sure on that one. And probably possibly key items as well. Uh, also things like bombs, um, possibly the Paleo Python which part fits. Uh, also the name change tickets, these are all type 1 items because they can all, well for the most part they can stack together I guess. Just maybe the key items are like the only ones that can't stack together but for the most part it's just items that can stack together but they aren't specifically used for spectrumizing. Type 2, those are the stuff for spectrumizing specifically, so the crystals, gems, and the uh, coins. All the stuff here. These are specifically used for spectrumizing and their number uh their item type number two. And also synth spheres are type two as well. Type three are weapons, so Max and Monica's weapons. Yeah, specifically Max and Monica's weapons. The right power weapons are different. All these are type three, um though I said earlier this is a type zero gun, which is why you can't equip this. Now type four, that's clothing, so well, kinda obvious. Type five, right pot stuff. Any right pod equipment, so the weapons, uh, feet, bodies, energy packs, all those are type 5. Type 6 are uh, fish, type 7 are gift capsules, type 8 are grilled fish. And beyond type 8, I'm not sure if there's a type 9 or higher, but if you get like obscenely high type values, it, they seem to work out like in a normal-ish way. I haven't played around too much, but they don't really have any weird effects to them as far as I'm aware of. Now, as for the third value here, this is I call this a property value. It gives like a special property based on the number. So it's like four here. All like magic stars have four because it lets you repair them. If it's in a four, you can't actually repair it with re a repair powder. I don't think. Uh, then there's the only one that really matters um, in the, in the, like the context of the run so far is t a number twenty six. Those correspond to gate keys uh, disappearing. So basically, if you if you change the property value of a gate key so that it's not twenty six anymore, you can actually keep them even if you leave a dungeon. That's that's like the premise behind any percent no debug. We glitch in a bunch of gate keys, and then because they're not, uh, they, they don't have a property value of twenty six, they actually stay with us for uh, for like the entire game. All right, that's uh, kind of it for this part. Now, uh, I need to. Specify that the, these stats, the three numbers here, they correspond to Exorcism, Beast, and Scale for uh, Type 3 items, so Max and Monica's weapons. If you use the right pod weapon, they are not going to be at the same positions. So, uh, yeah, you're not going to be seeing three Exorcism, 21 Beast, and four Scale. It'll be somewhere around like, I think the ID might be Scale instead, uh, but I'm not completely certain. It's definitely not the same values. Um, alright, that's probably good for that. So yeah, you can see that I've, uh, with all this stuff here, I can glitch in really weird items, and I mentioned earlier how equipping the fishing rod can let you reset an item to its factory settings. Yeah, why don't we reset this turkey real quick, just so I show that off. So come here. Swap that. Equip. Remove bait, and look, it actually works, and it's got base stats, just like the regular turkey. Alright, so this is very helpful for certain parts of the glitch menu because uh, we there are definitely items where we want to have like a normal version, like a grade 0. That one has very high base stats, so we can get uh, specific items we want from it. Alright, next up. Oh yeah, so a limitation of this menu of force. So yeah, right here the beast stat is very high, but it's not really supposed to be that high. Like, see, I just went into debug mode to mess with the stats, and uh, because it was too high, it's not like the cap for uh, the cap for these is 34 beasts on a long sword. And so because of that, see, I can't I can even lower this, but I can't raise it beyond 34. Yeah, so if you want to try and do something with Max. Uh, Monica's glitch slot, you need to have, first off, you need to have synthesis points. Like, I have zero synthesis points at this, I can't actually change this item in any way. Um, but, uh, you, and even then, it's like, if you want to change it, I, I'm limited to 34, uh, 34 IDs, anything from 1 to 34 on Monica's long, um, with a long sword. Even then, it's like, I can't even go below 10. But every item has, like, a cap to it, and for the strongest item in the game, like, Great Zero, I believe Great Zero has the highest uh, highest max stats. Mm, actually, no, it's higher. 
maybe the legend, but yeah, like I think the highest is 250 for any stat, so he can't actually create any item with a legitimate eye, a legitimate weapon. Yes, it's 250 here. So yeah, you can't create more than uh, two. You can create any item from like uh, one to 250, and we come over here. We've definitely gone past 250. Like there, the item IDs even for legitimate items it goes all the way up to well, tasty water here, 425. So that's a limitation, but there is a way to get rid of that limitation. Let's see. So first off, before I continue on, uh, all right, we'll definitely want some money for this section. So let's go into duplicating fish. Uh, let's go into duplicating stuff with a named fish. So here, let's put in a fish into the aquarium and rename it real quick. Come here, name. Now. Nope. All the way to the beginning and name it N N N N N N N. It doesn't matter too much. You want at least twelve Ns for this one, but I just did the whole thing. You can probably use any letter you want, but Ns are a very convenient one for the run. All right now, remove this from the tank. Oh, whoops. Okay, remove that from the tank and then exit. And now we're going to uh, let's duplicate the hunter crystals. It's actually been a while since I've done this. Uh, let me see if I remember. I think you equip the hunting crystals onto Monica's uh, outfit slots. Come over here. This is so same thing as earlier. You're gonna essentially try and pull out an item, but you're not actually gonna have an item come out. So so over to the right pile with the energy pack. O X. Come over down here to the named fish. Where is it? So here it is. The name fish and press O. You now glitch it up. You can see the right pod's name is now a question mark. And then, if you equip Monica's outfit or just unequip whatever is on there, yeah, there we go. See, I now have twenty thousand forty six hundred crystals, which that's also too many. So if you pick it up, put it back down, it's now back in nine nine nine. If you have too many and try to exit the menu, you can't leave because there's too many. Just pick it up, put it back down, and you'll uh, be back to normal. You can exit the menu. Alright, so let's go sell this. Uh, you should probably go... Yeah, you should probably go to Conda's place next. Uh, I actually can't go to Conda's because I uh, somehow glitched up the game too badly with debug mode, so... Uh, you want to come over here to Sintane Station and... Talk to Conda, who's in the back of the train, if you've done everything, which... Uh, if you have gotten this far and you haven't used debug mode, you should definitely have Conda unlocked. It's not physically possible as far as I'm aware of to get to this point and not have Conda. Anyways, you want to buy 30 claws for this section. So just sell like maybe 200, 300, sorry, uh, 100 crystals and then just buy a bunch of 30 claws. I'll go here ahead and just bring these in with debug mode. Whoops. And just buy a bunch of them. Let me just fix this real quick because I have a, I have I mean, messed up a bunch with this, and picked up what uh, picked up items from having a uh, wildest number here on the top right is too high. That's not good, by the way. All right, I'll just move some stuff around real quick because it's getting in the way. Yeah, don't need that. See, don't need this really. All right. Now, I like putting these items up here just so it works out nicely, but uh, you can now start messing around with uh, getting any IDs because 30 claws, these add 2 to beast, and 100 crystals, these add 3. You could make basically any item in the game um, starting from like a certain ID uh, with these two items. There's like very few limitations, but uh, yeah, let's see. Let's start off by making a type. Uh, let's making. Uh, start by making a. Um, what do you call it? A grade zero. That's very helpful. So grade zero has a, a value of twenty. Yep, twenty there. Yeah, if you have some weapon, uh, let's see. Yeah, all right. You'll probably need to get something. Uh, you'll probably need to like. 
uh, level up a weapon or something, but you, you need to get up to 20 here. Type O, and it really doesn't matter what these other numbers are, but 20 B somehow, like level up a weapon or uh, some other way. Anyways, let's go ahead and then use Monica's slot and then glitch in this item. Oh wait, whoops. Here, you see I have a grade zero, type zero one, and now of course type zero grade zero. I'm going to fix this. All right, so grade zero. This is nice because it has 150, and this corresponds nicely to a very specific item. Or the nice thing is that it corresponds to uh, something that isn't a weapon, like a normal type 3 weapon. So what you want to do with this grade zero, uh, once it's fixed, spectrumize one holy crystal on it. Now remember how I said that type 3 corresponds to Monica's, uh, Max and Monica's weapons, yeah. Uh, this is useful because uh, Max and Monica's weapons are the only ones where you can spectrumize stuff onto them. You can't spectrumize stuff onto a right pod weapon. Uh, unless you come and do this. So equip the grade zero onto Monica's slot. Uh, it glitches in with the right pod thing here. And now you have a type 3 machine gun arm. Now what you want to make sure is that you do not fix this because if you've uh, we specifically made this type 3 just so that we don't, uh, we can actually use this, but this now essentially has infinite, not truly infinite, but just, uh, there is not really a, a, a cap beyond the memory limit, it's like 8 bytes long, uh, you can make any number that's 8 bytes long, I believe, with this. However, there are no synthesis points, so we're going to need to get a few synthesis points with this. Yeah, this is uh, this here is one way to get synthesis points, which is to glitch in Suki Kage's. Um, let me first check something real quick. Okay, yeah, 152. Right, so what you want to do is let's we don't need the holy crystals for now, so let's move these down here and fix this grade zero. So once you have fixed this grade zero, remember he's just putting on the right uh, fishing rod and then taking it off in the item menu here. So we want to spectrumize one sturdy cloth and put it uh, spectrumizes onto the grade zero, and that changes the ID value to 152, which corresponds to the samurai arm. Then put this and have Monica equip it. Again, Chiglichi. And you pull out a samurai arm. This one's type 0. We don't really want to type 0 for this, so let's go ahead and fix this now. Put this on the fishing rod and, whoops, equip it, remove bait. And now this is a normal samurai arm. So, with this normal samurai arm, uh, we're going to be using this to pull out another item. Yeah, this is kind of a long chain of stuff, which is why it's not really ideal for speedrunning, but uh, unfortunately it might have to be done at certain points. Alright, so once you've equipped the samurai arm, come over here, you can swap, swap, and put any item on here, and now there is a glitch to Kage. You see here, the stats are all zero, and it's also type 250, I, or no, not 250, uh, type 50, I believe. Which you can imagine is not a valid type. Right, so with this Tsukikage, we want to um, go ahead and glitch this onto this Type 3 machine gun arm we made earlier. So take this machine gun arm and put it back on the first slot and equip it onto Monica's outfit slot. Uh, this is one of the ways you can get quote unquote infinite synthesis points. It's not really infinite, but it's over 999, which will be normalized a bit. Let me show you real quick. Stop swap. And now you want to grab the Tsukikage and swap that with this. It should be gone now. And then if you equip Monica's outfits and check this, you'll see you have 24,915 synthesis points. You may not have ever seen that happen, especially if you only play casually. 
But yeah, the Tsukikage, that glitch Tsukikage we had, uh, the values, I'm not sure where like, the values get pulled from, it's obviously part of like, a right pop weapon's stats, but yeah, the sense of the points here are way higher than they should be. Now with this we can now, because of the type 3 machine gun arm as I said, we can actually go in and spectrumize well beyond the intended number. So let's go ahead and just spectrumize a hundred of these. 100, 100 crystals. See here, it'll raise it up to 350 beast. Now, because I use the, the synthesis points and there's technically like a hard cap of 999 uh, implemented in the game, it'll just drop it down to 999 after this initial one. Now with this, oh, let me just check something real quick. I think it's next is... I think it's 384. So we're, I'm gonna be glitching in name change tickets. So it's yep 384, which means next. Let's go ahead and spectrumize in 17 of these for 34, and I'll bring this up to 384. Now I've equipped this onto Monica. Again, do this stuff here. And pull out, you'll get a name change ticket. That's the only one to do that way. But you'll get a glitched up name change ticket. This one is type. Uh, I'm not sure what the type value was, but it's definitely not correct. All right. So this name change ticket is is useful because again, changing uh, changing names on stuff is uh, one of like the very nice ways of getting really high numbers. So, uh, of course, the tickets are useful, so we kind of want a lot of them, so we can duplicate these, but um, something, unfortunately, that method for duplicating just now where, that I showed with the fish, that is type 2 duplicated. You can only duplicate type 2 items, so the crystals. That's why I use a hundred crystal. The position for n numbers are different, like how many, how many items there are for, a for an item. How many items, like how many of a, an item there are in a stack. Yeah, they're located in different places for type 1 and type 2 items, so you can't use that method with the name fish for things like deserted cloth or name change tickets, unfortunately. But there is a way to do it with a name change ticket, which uh, that means we would need a proper name change ticket. So first off, let's make a second one. So again, to make a second one, just fix your samurai arms. And then you want to equip this back onto Monica's slot. Use the gun slot here to pull it out. Here you have Tsukikage, and then... Where are the rest of... Okay, the rest of the memes are there. And now, we'll equip the machine gun arm back on Monica's slot. Shuffle these around. And put a Tsukikage onto her slot. Alright, and then we, of course we do the same exact thing, get a hundred, hundred crystals and 17 uh, sturdy claws, and that's going to get us up to 384 beasts again. And that's the second name change ticket. Now, one of these needs to be fixed because these need to be type 1. Or one of these needs to be type 1. Make sure you keep track of which one you fix here. Remove bait. And now, this is the fixed one. We now need to duplicate this by putting it on a riot pot weapon of some kind. So, uh, let's use this barrel cannon because it's fixed. You can also just fix your uh, samurai arm here and then I'll be work too, but. Uh, this is how you duplicate an item, that a uh, type 1 item, specifically. So, first equip um, equip the right power weapon onto Monica's outfit slot. Grab this, do the shuffle thing again here. 
And now we're going to be putting in the item we want to duplicate. So in this case, the name change ticket. Remember the fixed name change ticket. You don't want to have the glitch one or else it doesn't work because it's not type one. And now here we're going to change the name with, this, with the glitch name change ticket that we have. Let's change it to A A A A A. Ah, for six A's total. I have seven, but it's fine either way. Six or seven, at least six A's. Equip this back onto Monica's alpha slot, and then here, and pull out any item. And now we have a ton of name change tickets. So that's the two ways of duplicating with Monica's slots. Uh, you glitch, use the fish method to glitch on type two items. And you use the name change tickets with the right pod weapon to glitch on with type 1 items. And now uh, these can go somewhere on the bottom because we'll need them, but uh, we don't need to ever see them again. Now, one thing that you, uh, to keep in mind about uh, name change tickets is that they, you need to have, you can't have like a full inventory, quote unquote full inventory, to, um, when you use it. So if you have an item that has over 999, you won't be able to use the name change ticket. You have to pick up the item and drop it back down so that it's like a normal amount. Kind of like a weird quirk of that, but... Well, either way, just make sure that you don't have any items that are beyond, like, the, uh, beyond capacity. Uh, next, let's see, that's duplicating type 1 items. Oh, yeah. Also, I guess I can show this off now, but something interesting about these name change tickets, I'll just use one of these for now. Doesn't really... Actually, let's get more than one. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. I suddenly forgot about this one, but there is... Uh, more ways you can use this, so first off, let's... Let me first check real quick. Um, Alright, sure, let's do this. Let's make an improved bomb, so... Uh, equip your uh, Type 3 machine gun arm again, and now let's glitch on these 10 name change tickets. You can just have to do as many you want. Swap, swap. Now, this. You can see here, it's now 1, 3, 8, 4, 33 scale, and then 16,705 synthesis points. So, yeah, these name change tickets also have absurdly high synthesis points. Which is very helpful because now we can use this for more glitching. So do you get that? Let's do two of these for 390, and then that's, this will give us improved bombs. But it's not just improved bombs. There's a reason why I said to grab ten of these. Come back to Max here. Equip Monica with the machine gun arm. Don't forget about that. Swap, swap. Come back, and then with the any random item come out and you have 10 improved bombs now. Unfortunately, they're not like, normal functioning ones, but you can just fix these up. Granted, uh, I'm not sure if these will work out so well. Yeah, it doesn't really work out as well with this, unfortunately, but uh, you can actually create multiple items. Oh, but this fixed it. Just doing one will fix it. Okay, interesting. I didn't know that would work. But yeah, I, I had 10 uh, name change tickets, and then I put it on, and now I have 10 improved bombs, so you can use this method to glitch in more items. And of course, name change tickets are not ideal for this, because they start off at 384. Like, the ID of the item that you're using for uh, for the specialization points um, for the Type 1 item duping. Yeah, the Type 1 item dupe will create a bunch of synthesis points, but they start at the ID of the item that you duplicated, so you'll definitely want to start with a lower ID number. Unfortunately, this means that you're kind of limited to, like, I think, you, I think rolling locks might be one of the earlier, earliest ones. Yeah, so you can't really make items with this method, unfortunately. Well, I mean, if you want to, like, mass produce these, you can't do that. So, like, if you wanted to try and glitch in a bunch of flame crystals, well, unfortunately, flame crystals are lower than uh, the lowest rolling log. So we can't do it like that. But, uh, well actually... Yeah, there's that, but like, there is a way to make these. It's like more roundabout, but I actually haven't tried it out yet myself. Let me try it out real quick. So that was for glitching in and type... Uh, or like duplicating type 1 items and then using that as like a base for mass creating items. 
Let me just check this out real quick. I haven't played around with this before, so it'll be interesting to see the results. Uh, let me put on, say, a Battle Wrench so that it's like the lowest one. Change the name of this to uh... so This won't duplicate the uh, this won't duplicate the Battle Wrench, but it will still glitch on the customization points because it's the whole point is that it affects a very specific part of the data. It doesn't matter what it is, it just won't. Uh, this just will not be duplicating the wrench and also just give the customization points. So you, there's a lot of like different properties of these that you can like figure out. Like it's not as if it's just, oh yeah, it works specifically for type one, type two. There are like it changes the data at a very specific point and it constantly tr uh, produces just specific results. In which case for type one like that. There's an, uh, there's an actual result of it creating, uh, of duplicating the item. With this, yeah, it's just one battle wrench. However, if I were to then take this battle wrench and then put it on this. Oops. I'm not sure that's all works or not. Oh yeah, there we go. Right, so I just... Went ahead and glitched that on, and if you check here, again, 16,705 synthesis points. That is going to work no matter what item, but yeah, now I have to start with a Beast Valley 1, and also, uh, I only have one item. I'm not sure this will still duplicate a bunch, but since it's type 3, it's, yeah, it's type 3 and not type, uh, type 1 anymore, so it's not going to create a bunch of items unless I change it back to type 1, so it will still be a little weird. Let's say like I want to make uh, one of these crystals, so it's 170. Yeah, let's start with 171, so that's going to create a crystal of some kind. Uh, okay, well, that wasn't quite what I meant to do. Well, 172. <laughs> okay, well, I'm you're right. It's 175, not 170. I messed it up. Well, it's fine. I can always just put it back in. Here's what I mean by if you know how the menu works, you can do whatever you want. Like, I pulled this item out, but it's not as if, like, I can't just throw it back in and redo this stuff. Just do this, and now the item's back on. I got the bread I originally put in. And now, if I just do this, I can spectrumize more stuff onto this to affect its value to a higher one, so... Spectrumize one more and that'll get me the flame crystal. Oops. Alright, there we go. It's a uh, flame crystal named Battle Wrench. <laughs> As strange as it is. Yeah, so this is a type 3 item still, so it's... Wait, it's a type 3 item. Oh my god, I just realized we just do this. <laughs> okay, middle of a tutorial and I just realized there's another setup for that. Though I'm not sure if it's in any way helpful. I just never thought about this as a setup. Yeah, th another thing is that I have tested stuff out, but there's a limit to like, how much creativity I have. But testing all this stuff out. There's still a lot of stuff you can do like in terms of changing values around like in special ways and to find good setups or stuff. So like hopefully someone out there can like help out with that but yeah for now it's like all the stuff is just stuff that either Glitch King has shown in his video or uh, I figured out on my own. And also shout out to Glitch King definitely. Uh, if you have not seen Glitch King's video you should definitely check it out because he is the one who originally found a glitch. He has a very detailed video of some cool effects you can create with this. I probably missed a few here and there. Uh, and all, some of them are more like cool things that you can do that aren't really beneficial to the speedrun. But at least I haven't found a use for this, them in the speedrun. So if anyone wants to check it out, definitely will be great to have someone like play around with it more. See if there's uh, more cool things that can come out. Especially with some of like the effects that I haven't found useful personally. Right. Anyways, that is just how you duplicate items with type 1 items, uh, like a special effect that I, well, I now know about, which is creating type 3 item from this. And now I know we can 
we should in theory be able to just spectrumize stuff onto this one, I believe. Let me try it out real quick. Yep, you can send stuff onto this item as if it were a regular Type 3 item, of course. And not too useful just because you need a name change ticket for that, but maybe some stuff could be found up. I found out evolving this, who knows. Alright, um, yeah, but that's how you do this stuff, and also, of course, uh, you can split, as I showed, you can, like, split up this, and then, like, if I want to create 17 items from here, you just take this and do that. So, if it's at a point you need to create, like, a specific amount of items, like, mass-produce a bunch of items, and you just need, like, a handful of them, like, you just split this up. This is unfortunately something I did not realize, uh, when I originally routed any percent no debug, so that's something that needs to be changed, but, yeah, you can... Very quickly create a bunch of items, just like that. Our next creating gate keys, right? Yeah, I'll show off making a gate key. But I did mention uh, mention that type twenty property value twenty six. Sorry, tw property value of twenty six is what corresponds to a gate key disappearing. So let me just get a normal one in here. Let me see. Gate keys are down here, right? So this is a fairy saw for chapter two. Let me just glitch it on for you to see. But yeah, these are the values for a Ferrisol. Exorcism 1, 3, 39, Beast, and 26 scale. But yeah, as I said, we don't want the 26 value for the property. That's unfortunately the thing that makes gate keys disappear. So if you just uh, go in and change the values a bit. Let me just... Uh, let's see. Well, let me just glitch on a bunch of these gun repair powders real quick. This is how we glitched items in, oh, I used to glitch items in any percent, no debug. I duplicated a bunch of gun repair powders and used these for mass creating uh, all of the, I the gate keys. There we go. And of course, you don't want to have too many or else it doesn't work because you can't uh, have too high values for um, for the name change ticket to work. The name change ticket. Right, so next is put this on, equip this on the machine gun arm onto Monica. And now glitch on one of the gun repair powders. Also, give, uh, I would like to get rid of this, but unfortunately, it's now stuck for. Um, suck with me for a bit. Alright, so let's... Uh, next up I want to... Oh, right, yeah, I glitched on this, so now... See, 6,705 again, and now I can change these values freely. So I want to make... Whoops. Shoot. Well, it doesn't matter too much because these are whatever, but... Yeah, I, uh, I just want to make any gate key, so somewhere in the... 339. So let's add 40. Let's add, yeah, 40 points. Somewhere around 40. Whoops. 42 should be good. Alright, so 340. 40, yeah, 340 corresponds to your slash branch, so this will create a type 0 slash branch. It, it's, if you didn't uh, come in here debug like I did, it will be like 3 exorcism and 24 scale or something as well. But yeah, just do this. What am I doing? Hold on, wait. Was out and I have a slash branch and of course uh, type zero I can't really do much with this but if I let me just show you this real quick I'm gonna go into a dungeon and then you'll see right now here is this legitimate fairy saw that I got from debug mode this is like the glitch one that I got from making it just now gonna remove butterfly woods Alright, 
you can see as soon as I enter this, this is stage actually, the fairy saw disappeared, but the slash branch is still in my inventory. If I leave now, I will still have the slash branch on me, but uh, well, no, but it's just the slash branch is on me, and of course the fairy saw disappeared as soon as I entered the stage. Of course, this does actually function as a slash branch. Uh, well, it's going to be hard to show this off because uh, I need to find a room that actually has a door. So let me see if I can get one. Hopefully this has a door, so... Hold on, there's... Yep, there is a door here. So let me just go over there and show you. I did not pick up an extra slash branch. Well, actually, I guess I did. <laughs> right, yeah, skip floor thing unfortunately creates- well, it creates an extra one. Oh, well... This is the other slash branch, a legitimate one. This is the one that I have. Show you real quick. But yeah, remember, this is the one I glitched in. This is a legitimate one, and the glitch one will still, in fact, work. It only checks the item's ID, so he can use these. Right, that was a little wonky, but at least it works. Yeah, that is how you create gate keys. Now that's kind of all I know for Monica's glitch slot. Let's call this Monica. I call this Monica's glitch slot because it's on Monica's outfit slot. Even though you go to the right pot and do it, uh, the reason why it doesn't work is just because Monica's outfit slot and it kind of overlaps with the right pot's energy pack slot, I believe. So you can do a bunch of stuff by uh, playing around with these. But yeah, there's actually another glitch slot, which is, uh, remember at the very beginning, I did show you that we glitched in an item with Essence Sphere on this slot here. Well, or this slot, if you're, if you're doing it legitimately, of course. But yeah, th this slot here corresponds to uh, Max's glitch slot. This is the one where you use Max's outfit instead of the right pot energy pack. Now, this one has different properties, because first off, I said that the values worked out because of, uh, by using a B stat on Monic on a weapon, a Type 3 weapon specifically, a Type 3 item I guess, on Monica's glitch slot, but with these here, the values are different. You use a different offsets for doing this and you can see here this is a Sin Sphere Type 2 item and the numbers are on Cyclone, Smash, and Exorcism. You could probably tell the formatting. It's literally the same as the other one but shifts it up a little bit. So Cyclone is now the item's type, Smash is the item's ID, and Exorcism is the item's property value. Now, I feel like Max's glitch thought is probably less versatile. There's definitely, there's a lot you can do with it but there are, it feels a little more restricting in certain aspects. But it is much faster as well when uh, the stars align, and coincidentally, the stars align pretty well for the any percent debug category. We do need to use both glitch slots, but there's actually a surprising amount of stuff we can do with Max's glitch slot here. Alright, so first off, of course, creating any item with Max's glitch slot. Again, I used uh, rolling logs because we need a Sin Sphere with Smash to create it, and of course, Sin Spheres are nice because uh, you just Create a bunch, and then you don't even need change, you don't even get anything in the cyclone value. You just need smash about the smash that hand with items here. You just, it will automatically be type zero, which is exactly what we need. So let's say I want uh, I'll just show it again, but I'll just say I want to make Athena's arm. Like I'll need a hundred. Get in some more of these real quick. Yeah, so, so you want to do this, and I want to make an Athena's armlet, so I just make a hundred and then put it on the second slot of the tenth row for me a little differently because I glitched up. Oh, also, I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning, but do not put anything important on this slot here. I mean, if you're playing around with it, you probably don't care about the save file too much, but do not put anything important on this slot here because it will disappear. Um, the way this works is that it's pulling in data, like it's kind of shifted a little over, so it's pulling out, uh, pulling essentially like a, essentially printed as like an item slot in between these two, and it's using values from both of these item slots. So the item's ID is going to get removed from this and replaced with whatever item it is, and uh, the numbers typically don't align with an actual item ID. 
I have only seen one instance of it coincidentally working out that I created an item. But yeah, you would that would need a lot of planning to create some like to consistently create items. I don't I have not really tested out stuff involving this too much. Nor that I really uh, think I want to go through with trying to play around with this to create items on both slots, but yeah, anyways. You this equip um access gun. Now you uh, do the glitching again, and now you can't move across different screens with Max's outfit, so I just pick up the bread and do this. Again, do this, and then pull out with the bread here for an Athena's armlet, type 0. So I can actually do this glitch slot stuff with Monica as well, with this. If I just move this over here. See, I can do just fine with this. And then, like, I really uh, don't know if I can do anything like this. I actually haven't tested out this before, but yeah, okay, I just got rid of Max's outfits. Like that, so you can, like, mess around with Monica's slot here, but it's, as far as I'm aware of, there's nothing, like, important that she can do with this. Uh, yeah, that's how you create items with the type, uh, with the glitch slot, for Max's glitch slots. Now, oh, getting some synthesis points with Max's Glitch Slot. So this is um, an interesting one, but it's this used to be helpful, then I realized there are better ways of doing this, so... Yeah, let's... Let me just get rid of this real quick, I don't need it. So if we need synthesis points on a weapon for... You can see here, like, the Synthesphere earlier is gone. Yeah, so I like to put useless items here just to get rid of them, but yeah, be very careful what you put on the slots. It'll disappear. Yeah, so let's say you want to create an item, or you want to like synthesize some points on here. Right, so for this, you need to have a spare right power weapon, something you're willing to get rid of. So let's just use this barrel cannon as an example. So if you come here, do max glitch slot, and then put this barrel cannon on. Let me first also get um, a regular barrel cannon just to show off the default stats so you can see how it changed. So you can see here, uh, it is now plus 13, no stats, but is, there's 95 synthesis points. Yeah, this actually corresponds to the right pot's attack stat. I'm not sure where the 13 came from, but uh, the attack stat is where you get the synthesis points from. So it's not as helpful because you get less points compared to like the other stuff. Plus you need to have a web like an entire weapon for each one. But yeah, this is a way to glitch uh, synthesis points on with um, with a weapon from, like, with some sort of right power weapon. Let's see, since here, uh, special type 2, oh, right, duplicate type 2 items, so, you can also duplicate, duplicate type 2 items, so again, these crystals, and not only that, but you can also actually change these properties. This is something that I do in the any percent category right now, with the debug menu. So, let's start off by... First off, making... Oh, hold on. I want to make a Stinger Wrench, so item ID number 4, so let's spectrumize two rolling logs. Hold on, wait, it's... I believe it was the slot for me. Yeah, okay, the slot. Uh, where's Max's outfit? Here it is. And then pull out this for a stinger wrench. This is type 0, I want it to be fixed. So let me just fix up this stinger wrench. Alright, I have a perfectly normal stinger wrench. I wanted to fix because it's I don't want a type 0 item later on. But I can't make like an um a perfectly fine uh sense sphere here. Let me just move this stinger wrench here now down to where this was. Now I'm going to glitch on a regular type 3 weapon, something that's not glitched up, just any regular type 3 weapon like this long sword that I had before. Now this creates a, a weapon with a lot of smash and beast, and these two values actually correspond to some nice values. So with this, let's move this lightning, lightning crystal down here. Remember, lightning crystals give 3, lightning, uh, three points of lightning. 
Actually, you know what? Let me just do Smash instead. I'll do this Destruction Crystal. Just to show how it looks. So now with this, if I now glitch this on with Max's glitch slot. Remember, I put on a weapon onto the Stinger Wrench to give it a ton of stats. I pulled out a weapon here, which is useless, but... If you look here now, I have 16,912 Destruction Crystals. And not only that, but the stats are now 3 to Cyclone, 4 to Smash, and 1 to Exorcism. The stats of... Uh, stats of the Stinger Wrench. Those are the basic stats because I can't... I didn't change like the fact that it is a Stinger Wrench. But not only that, these are actually... Wait, hold on. No, 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 wait, that's all there is to it. But yeah, I pulled out a Smash Wrench Type 0 because this is a Destruction Crystal that had naturally had 3 Smash to it, and the Smash that is the ID, as I said before. Don't need the... so, to hear that. But now, this is also very helpful. Remember, I can use Smash the Smash stats for creating items. So now I can create any item from... Uh, 4 to 400, but only numbers divisible by 4. That's one limitation of Max's glitch slots, that you need to have one Sin Sphere. And also, the absolute maximum number of items you spectrum at one point is 100, so... Uh, with a with a uh, regular Destruction Crystal, you can only get to uh, from 3 to 300, with, using multiples of 3. For, uh, if you were to use, like, sturdy claw, oh, we're not sturdy claws, just some other material, like, uh, I don't know, what gives smash? Oh, yeah, of course, rolling logs. If you roll rolling logs, is anything from 2 to 200, multiples by 2, and then for, if you were to glitch on a battle wrench for a special crystal here with 1, anything from 1 to 100. Of course, yeah, anything from 1 to 100. But this also means that if you wanted to create an item that's, say, uh, item 101, well, um, you can't really make- you can't just use the Battle Wrench one for 101 synthesis crystals, that doesn't work out. And, you also, and also this- it, it lines it with the Smash stat of uh, a synth sphere, so you can't just use this Type 3 weapon here and then glitch on 113, uh, 101 points to Smash, that's not gonna work out. So, um, however, you can spectrumize this and then use the stats of the Sun Sphere. However, of course, you lose the weapon, so you need to make a new Type 3 weapon if you are trying to get higher item, higher ID values every time. So yeah, if you're trying to create items like uh, that are prime numbers above 100, it's going to start getting it's starting to start getting really messy, and then even then, it's like if the numbers have really high prime factor composition, like high prime factor decompositions. Uh, it's like the numbers aren't really gonna look pretty. There's it's gonna be a mess, and even then, it's like you want you ideally don't want to have too many different types of items. Uh, thankfully, though, this as I said, Max's glitch slot isn't too versatile. Um, but if the stars align, the, uh, you could get some really nice stuff, and coincidentally, the stars align really well. This <laughs> Remember uh, that setup for pulling out name change tickets earlier? Well, yeah. This is much faster. Not only that, but it's also really nice. See? It's just 96, uh, 96 of these special spheres here that I created. Coincidentally, the name change ticket is divisible by 4. It's obscenely high numbered, so you ha it has to be like very minimum F4 to use it, and coincidentally it happens to be divisible by 4. So yeah, this glitch slot is something that works out nicely like under very specific circumstances, and coincidentally this is one of those circumstances where the number works out really well. So yeah, if you want to create items with max, this glitch slot is like 2, like 2, 3, 4, those are kind of common numbers, and 5 maybe. Uh, yeah, 5 is definitely another common number you will be using, but uh, I've been create a bunch of different destruction crystal, like different sets of crystals for every dupe. It's kind of like that kind of takes some time, but having like one set here that coincidentally works out for a lot of items is really nice. Now this, and of course you can split up 
you can also duplicate a bunch of items. Um, so I made this using, of course, uh, using the battle wrench, or not battle, the stinger wrench. So I can actually pull out a stinger wrench and then put it onto another item. So if I just do this, now the stinger wrench here, I just pull it back out because um, now the values are different, but yeah, this is now a sense sphere with this. I don't want this, so just put it here to get rid of it. And now this one, the stats, you can see 808 smash. This is the 808 items I had earlier. So if I wanted to, I can just create another sense sphere here with this, with the same exact values as before. So I can actually split up the dupes by doing this. You come down and you see again 808. Uh, and this time it's uh, because it's uh, I only can change I the value starting from Cyclone. This is now a lightning crystal that originally had three lightning. Now it has three more stats: Cyclone, Smash, and Exorcism. That correspond to the the stats of or like the basic values for a Stinger wrench. So both glitch slots have a way to like duplicate items and then of course change the values a little bit, uh, so that you can split them up, split them up a bunch uh, amongst like different items. I don't really know if there's anything useful for this yet, but this is definitely like a thing that exists. And of course, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for Max's glitch slot. I can't really think of anything else. I've found out that will be important, but yeah, these are kind of like all of the special effects of Max and Monica's glitch slots. There's, uh, well, there's also some more stuff with Monica's glitch slots. So yeah, these are kind of like special things that we could do after we're done with the big menu. But first one is Infinite Ripe Pot Experience. This one was, oh shoot, how do you do this again? Um, right, you first have me the Sin Sphere that has a very long name, at least I believe 12 letters long. So if you spectrumize, like say the armband repair powder, it's going to create a sin sphere with a very long name. Now if you take this and put it onto any item onto Monic on Monica's glitch slot, so let's say I want to use this Mimi. Whoops. <laughs> I was off. And then I'm going to glitch this onto uh, Monica's glitch slot here. Alright, so this Mimi has um, the name of the armband repair powder somewhere towards the end of its data. So I'm going to now take this and... Oh shoot, what was next? Um... Next up, I need to take this and then I'm going to glitch it onto... Yeah, I think I just glitch it onto Monica's outfit slot, actually. Alright, so... Monica's outfit... So it doesn't really matter what I have on here, really. Yep, there we go. So yeah, if you take a... If you first take a... A uh, sin sphere with a very long name, so it's just like the armband repair powder sin sphere. You glitch it onto any item whatsoever using Monica's glitch slot, and then take that item and then glitch it onto Monica uh, onto any item on Monica's uh, glitch slot. <laughs> It'll shove the data far enough away that it goes and affects the right ball experience. This, the five black numbers here means it's uh, some obscenely high number. Which I now come over here and talk to Cedric. Oh shoot, this file's messed up. Alright, never mind. It's fine. So I can now come here and upgrade the right pod. And can block numbers, but if I buy something, it'll drop down to 99,999. So, yeah, I effectively have uh, infinite, quote unquote, infinite right pod experience. And of course, it means I could buy like all the cores and all that if I really needed to, which I don't need in this file. Uh, the other one is infinite right pod feel. Oh, well, I'll show the infinite right pod feel later. Next up is very powerful weapons. So as I said earlier, uh, type 3 weapons, they have a cap to their stats. And I've shown you that it is possible to break the cap by just 
changing the memory data. So let's say I want to make a very powerful weapon now. Let's uh, you could do that by taking a right power weapon. It could be any rival weapon as long as it's type 5. Equip that on and then glitch on a weapon onto it, type 3 weapon onto it. Let me first find this. Right. Uh, and then I say I want to uh, make a very powerful uh, longsword. I don't know. Make this very powerful. Let's change the name of this. Uh, this one you need to make it a very specific name, so let's do uh, N N 9 N's. 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There we go. So that's 9 N's, 4... Oh uh, yeah, 9 N's, 4 A's, and 7 Z's. Confirm this, so Naz. Now let's pull this back out. We see here, uh, what? Oh, shoot, sorry. What's... I might find the setup wrong then. It might not be type 5. It might not be a right weapon. It might be a regular weapon. Let me try this again real quick. Sorry about that. Yep, and now that's correct. Yeah, so it used to be type 3 weapon that you equip onto Monica's uh, slot, but yeah, I now have a longsword that's plus. Oh my god, that's a really long. 23 melee, 130,130. Attacks at 23,130 and durability at 23,130. So, yeah, world's strongest longsword. Definitely not supposed to see that. And it does actually work. Like, if I just go into a stage right now and fight with Monica, you'll see that she uh, she's gonna be doing an absurd amount of damage. So find any monster and then remember it's 23,000 so if I do this, you can see there 57,000 damage. Yeah, world's strongest longsword in existence. Now the reason why I have this, uh, these stats here, these are actually very important. It's not like, I didn't just choose these randomly. So the reason why it's NNNNNAAA is easy to see just because I forget the exact pattern of the numbers but if you don't, like, if you choose like I believe the A's were all Z's instead. Uh, it wouldn't work because it glitches on, uh, glitches up the durability stats. So you can see the obscenely high durability numbers. Like it's 48, 48 on the gold berserk. This one's obscenely huge. It glitches up that number, and I believe, and then it makes it so that it's unusable. Let me just double check to confirm. But I believe that was why. I believe that's what it, uh, glitched it up for. Oh god, it's... I screwed the menus. Uh, this is another consequence of glitching stuff in... You could potentially <laughs> um, get rid of stuff in your menu like that. Uh, okay, yeah, this is a very wonky weapon, but yeah, it's... If uh, You could play around with the letters or something and also you could find like what all the uh, numbers like what all the letters correspond to on Glitch King's video he does actually explain what each one does but yeah if you don't have like uh, there's a possibility if you don't do like the right combination of letters uh, you'll create you'll glitch up the durability stat which will then make it so that it's actually unusable and also if you ever uh, level this up then you're uh, then it's going to reset to like the maximum stats for what a uh, what longsword should have. Um, this works. Uh, this trick here works specifically for um, ma maximum weapon you can't because you know type three. But there is another setup for type five weapons, right power weapons. So you can create like the world's most powerful barrel cannon this time. I'm not sure if I can change the name of stuff right now. Oh yeah, I just completely glitched it up. I'm just save real quick so that I can do this again. Yep, it's fixed now. So you can see his uh, energy pack name. Uh, I'm trying to glitch on, right. Let me first fix this just in case. Uh, where's the bait? I don't, I don't think you really need to fix this, but might as well while I'm here. 
Right, so Monica needs that, and then... I'm going to glitch on the world's most powerful barrel cannon. Okay, yeah, this is working. So I glitched on that. Now instead of N N N N N A A A Z Z Z Z, it's just N N N N N three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen one two three four five six seven. Yep. So thirteen Ns and seven Zs. This time around, it's you don't need to worry about the letter A's. Basically, just combine the Ns and A's together. And this creates the world's most powerful barrel cannon in existence. See here, stats are 28,000 in attack, durability, and flame. So now, yeah, world's most powerful barrel cannon. This, uh, this basically makes it so that we can one shot any monster we want and even any boss we want in the game in any percent no uh, debug. All right, now for the final thing that I'm gonna show off, it's uh, Infinite Ripe Off Field. This is the same exact setup that Glitch King uses in, uh, uses in his video. So first come in here, put a fish and then rename it to just N, 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 four Ns. So just come backspace, N, 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 N. And there we go. Now for this, you want to equip this onto the right pod, but you also uh, need to first unequip the right pod's uh, energy pack. So first off, we need to equip an energy pack onto Max's item slot here. I remember, you can just equip this and now equip any item you want onto the slot, so do that. Um, move these down here. And now remember, second slot here is what gets equipped. Next up, you need... Uh, that's... Yeah, actually, that's it. Well, the second thing you need for this one, you need to have um, one of these items. One of the book items, so either a notebook or the monsters... The, the monster notes or... Uh, I think just like another one, but any of like, these book items where you can go and check the memos. Alright, so how do you create infinite right pod fuels by doing... Okay, I want to uh, go into a stage as max. You want to equip? Oh, so you want to make sure you equip the right pod pack normally at, at some point, right? So now you have a normal right pod here. Switch over to the right pod. Now you want to go R one over here. Um. Oh shoot! Oh, you also need to equip this onto Max's clip slot. Uh, Max's item slots here. Now while you're in. Max's item slots here with the notebook, check memo. And now you're still going to be on Max's item slots, but you can't actually see it. So remember, the order was energy pack, notebook, and then the blank space. So right now I'm still on the notebook, press left, and here is energy pack. Exchange, and that exchanges with the very first item, which uh, in this case isn't really <laughs> what I wanted. Oh, and then it crashed. <laughs> oh shoot, sorry. Yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff. I actually did not know it could crash like that. Interesting. So get on the right pod, come here, check the memo. Now go over to energy pack and exchange to get rid of it. So you're not at zero out of zero. This is important because if you don't do this, you won't have any right pod fuel. Now swap the fish with the energy pack. Again, do the same thing, check memo. And a Whip this onto the energy pack slot, and now you have um, a fuel tank that's obscenely high. 865 million, 309,568 uh, fuel in total. 
So yeah, this is how you get infinite right pop feel. Uh, and if you're playing this on PS4, this number will actually drop down by a lot, like around 2,000 per second. But because it's so obscenely high, it's gonna take hours for it to drop down. So uh, yeah, you will not really need to uh, worry about that in the context of a speed run. Like if you if you run out of fuel, then well, you're definitely doing something wrong because the run only takes like three hours, like three and a half hours. Or maybe like uh, to like maybe five hours at most. But yeah, that is everything uh, so far that I know about the um, the equipment eating glitch. Yeah, there's a lot in here, and there's also bound to be a lot that I have not discovered. Like there's some of these setups I only just found out after I came back to mess around with the debug stuff. So there's bound to be a lot of more stuff that I can to avoid this glitch menu, it'll be great if someone else can come help me out, because, uh, yeah, I'm definitely, like, at the end of my, um, like, this is kind of the extent of my creativity, I'm out of ideas for like, messing around, though, finding out that I can create a new, uh, create, like, a type 3 weapon just by doing this was interesting in the middle of this video. But yeah, that's everything there is, um, so make sure, yeah, make sure you've figured out like how all this stuff works, like play around with it a bit, try to like figure out like understand intuitively how this glitch actually works. Because like when you actually get to learn learning the big menu, have like actually understanding how all this stuff works is significantly better than just going in and just being like, okay yes dude, do do this exact set of inputs. If I make one mistake then I gotta start over. <laughs>